uh, I was building, I was building up as the book suggests going to, you know, I, I think I got up to Ram 64. Logisim was really getting slow. And also when I was looking at the synthesis report, I noticed that distributed RAM was being done by distributing flip-flops all over the floor plan. It was in the thousands or tens of thousands, which obviously was not going to scale when we got up to 16K. And most chips have block RAM in them. It occurred to me that there's got to be a way to cause the synthesizer to infer or to directly tell it, you you know, you want to use block RAM. Uh, and I did notice that uh, if you look in memory, you see RAM and ROM. You know, typically we weren't using these things because we were, we're building our own and learning from the book. Uh, but I did notice there was RAM and ROM. And so I wondered, okay, are, have these been optimized to use block RAM? So I wanted to test that out. And I did. So I implemented a 16K block RAM. And at first I didn't realize, uh, I think the default is 256 by 8. And I didn't realize that the implementers of the components had put in a width, an address width and a data width uh, set of parameters. And so I went on ahead and built, you know, started building up from 256 by eight, you know, the next level 512 and then the next level 4K and then finally 16K. And I ran the report and sure enough, it was using block RAM, but it was using it rather inefficiently. And so I thought, well, it'd been really nice had the implementers actually implemented it parameterized. Well, <laughs> Had I paid attention, uh, I would have seen that, well, they did. I decided to re-record it after realizing that uh, you can implement an address width and a data width as one component. So that's what I did. Uh, and then I just uh, exposed the pins, kind of how they'd been exposed before. Um, also turning off or setting the enables to use line as opposed to byte because uh, the output enable... I, that takes away the output enable and just makes the output live all the time, which is kind of what we want. So I expose the clock, I expose the load pin off, off right enable, uh, data in, address in, and then data out. It's very simple. And so drop that into the test harness and I ran the synthesizer. And what I encountered, so this is the log from the synthesis from Vivado. Your log may vary depending upon what you use, but this is what Vivado does. And again, this is being synthesized for the Arctic 7 uh, Alcatri AU board, which I won't show in this video, but in a bunch of other videos, I've, I have been showing it. And and the chip does have block RAM, uh, quite a decent amount of it, actually. So here is what got allocated, or at least the component that it identified. And so, oh, actually, sorry, that's wrong. That was, well... This this is what happened when you took the 256 by 8 and you scaled it out to go up to 16K. It allocated 128 2K bit block RAMs, which is, I think, fairly wasteful because it wound up using... Well, it wound up using two... 18K bit components, which didn't seem right to me because that's not enough, not enough memory. And so I actually didn't test this design out to see if it actually worked the way I would have expected it to work. So anyway, I was I was kind of confused by what it actually what it actually did. And then after I realized that uh, the component implemented a width and a depth, uh, I redid it this way. And then this is the synthesize. This is the synthesis. Hopefully, I picked the right one. Yeah. So this is the synthesis that came out of that. So 256k bits, 16k by 16 bit, which is what we want. It allocated one RAM, and it allocated eight 36k bit components, which is what I would expect. If I do the math, then I come up with enough bits to be able to store uh, this configuration. And so that that's a pretty efficient use. Now, there, uh, the it doesn't end on a boundary. Uh, and so this could be done maybe a little differently so that it would only allocate exactly as many 
uh, 18 or 16 K bit blocks as you need. Maybe I don't have to think about that, but in any case, this is, this is a pretty efficient use. And then if you look at, uh, the other components used very, very light, very low, uh, floor plan to just implement a, a basic RAM module. So uh, I'm going to close with this. This will be, I may not even use this component. I may just drop the RAM component on the CPU directly since it can be very easily used without any abstraction. And uh, that will really conclude the build from the components required for, for chapter three. Thanks for watching.